Hello viewers, my name is Adam. Yeah, I'm here. This is Tiki Media Productions, bring you another movie review. This is part two of our great Barbaheimer review. Barbaheimer. The movies of Greta Gerwig's Barbie and Chris Nolan's no, uh, Oppenheimer. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody decided to go in. Everybody, Everybody was dressed having up. a party, yo. That's yeah. just what it comes down yes, to. Yes, it was. For Barbie, this is what we'll be doing our review on. So, you know, when it comes right down to it, Barbie, uh, never in my life did I ever thought that I was going to be watching one. Yeah, caring for a movie like this at all. This was as far from my zeitgeist as you can possibly get. Not nowhere near where I would have thought this movie would have landed on my radar as far as the kind of content that I usually digest. Why was I wrong? <laughs> Luckily for Barbie is that I'm a fan of cinema first and foremost. And let's just say, during the process of when the uh, Barbie was uh, Barbie film was being developed, mm -hmm. it's 60 plus years in the making, ever since the debut of the first doll. Um, the first cinematic um, version of Barbie actually existed before this. That's true. Um, Pixar, um, they brought to life the Barbie characters and the in a toy form, and they were hilarious when they were done when, mm -hmm. when they were doing it in that way. So if that was any indication of what we were planning to get or what was coming to us later down the road, wow! <laughs> yeah, and sure, Barbie in of itself is mainly strictly geared towards younger girls, and mm -hmm. they had a lot of animated movies that those are for children. Yes. Keep them away. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Yeah, I think, I, I, certain individuals out there who's reviewed this movie, yeah, they've started to come out the woodworks and try to make it, it a point. But we're going to reiterate it here and now. Barbie is not a movie you bring your kids to at least until after you've watched it yourself. Yeah, because... you know where your kids stay, land as far as what you feel is uh, appropriate for them to watch. Keep that in mind that this is definitely one of those movies you're going to need to do that for. Yes, because Barbie is PG-13, like its other male-oriented live-action counterparts, like Transformers, G.I. Joe, mm -hmm. etc. And I will say, in comparison to those, like the, even though those are PG-13 as well, they very much like the Saturday morning cartoons that they're based off of. Mm -hmm. Barbie is more mature in its adult um, content. Look, this movie, I didn't have it laughed as hard, nor have I had the chance to self-reflect as deeply until actually having the chance to actually watch this film. This is a very sophisticatedly made uh, picture. Yes, um, the story developed by um, the director herself, Greta Gerwig, and also her husband, Noah Baumbach, mm -hmm. was able to uh, weave, uh, weave together a plot uh, that really brought into the meta aspects to the very fact that this is about a Barbie world and about Barbie, the toy Barbie. And it comes to a mind that these are actually uh, other uh, actual entities themselves. Yeah, see, basically the story revolves around the concept of what Barbie truly is and what, it ha and what she as an icon has meant specifically for the uh, audience for which she was developed for. In this case, young developing girls. And how that had reflected since time progressed. Mm -hmm. And um, like very much, and is like in the way the plot, uh, the story folds out, is that it's a reverse society of which Barbie Land is <laughs> a female dominated world and the Kins <laughs> are just there by the sidelines. <laughs> Very much a... The cheerleaders too, though. Mm -hmm. Barbie, she's playing stereotypical Barbie. Mm -hmm. um, the one in which basically just puts your... Uh, like, like, the basic, you know, platform. Basic. Yeah, the basic platform for which all Barbies are really based on. Or at least where every young girl can finally uh, find a variation of themselves in. Yeah, and essentially the story is about the, her Barbie... Um, Again, like some form of midlife crisis, <laughs> because man, because apparently her life is tied to the her, the human in which it was playing her, which is an interesting concept in and of itself. This very much um, ties together the kind uh, um, the scenario in which what we envision for ourselves, we put into the very things we are uh, that we feel as though 
uh, shapes and molds our world. It's a vice versa give uh, give or take situation. And yeah. this strong tether puts them in this um, kind of uh, trajectory. Yeah, trajectory of where they're going to head there down the road. Yeah, and Margaret Robbie, who's been trying to find that that a major role in of herself mm -hmm. um, really shines in the light on a very like, like has a very star making turn here. Yeah, even I, more so than when she was playing Harley Quinn. Yeah, I feel as though she really did find herself in the role of Barbie because you, yeah. Do you know that Mar this is Margot Robbie in the role? Of course, but I feel as though unlike every other um, movie or at least the um, character driven genre. Uh -oh, um, pieces that she did before. This is a case of where I can definitely say I literally saw her become the character. Mm -hmm. And like, and she, with her being the stereotypical Barbie, the movie is still is also popular with other types of Barbies, um, and their very categorical uh, <laughs> sense. Um, one major Barbie in particular, played by Issa Rae, she plays President Barbie. Woo -hoo! I like I like uh, Issa Rae to, uh, for Insecure and uh, like a lot of the Barbies they like they don't necessarily have that much of a um, role to play as no. more of uh, their significant in their supporting roles. It very much is a case in which yes they uh, each of the Barbies that are brought into here are Barbies that fill a niche aspect of the society that they have formulated. However, they uh, because the actresses who are playing them, you very much see that the actresses are using their own personalities to emphasize the variation of Barbie that they're supposed to be trying to portray. Mm -hmm. And for is also the Kins on the spectrum. Mm. Um, a lot of talk has been said about Ryan Gosling's um, role as his kin, Beach Kin in particular, mm -hmm. who... Like this, this poor man. He like he's going through the ringer and throughout this movie. Him and all of his kins. I mean, <laughs> let's be honest. I felt a certain kind of way when this movie was trying to tell us about the concepts of where you know kins fit in the Barbie society, mm -hmm. and then they also. But it's like you understand it because they're trying to still tell. They're trying to tell the story of the whole concept of walking a mile in somebody else's shoes. If you don't like the way that the, if, as a male, and you're watching this film, you don't like the way that the kids are being treated in this film, then why are you allowing this to happen to Dude. women in our society? Yes. And kudos to all the male actors who know how to take a joke. Yes. Because they own each of their roles. They do. These are not throwaway roles at all. They des They really went took the on concepts and they ran with it. Yeah. And particularly with uh, Ryan Gosling, who he himself has been a sh like a, a shadow of uh, ma masculinity ever since on the the um, the Notebook, who has been trying to struggle to find some roles that. Uh, help define his still quote unquote um, macho behavior. And let's put it out there right now, uh, at least for our um, say or, or, or how we feel. We always felt that Ryan Gosling has been a, a, a incredibly talented actor, and he has proven himself beyond reasonable doubt in multiple other uh, um, pro uh, projects he has worked on. Yes, uh, from Drive, mm -hmm. Crazy Stupid Love, uh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Yes, uh, where were it, uh, and uh, another particular role uh, the. The Nice Guys. Yeah, oh, yeah. All oh, I under loved them to the Nice yeah, Guys. All underrated pictures that sadly were flops. But, but you know what? That's okay because they led him here. And I absolutely loved him in this movie. Yes, and all the other kids. Simu Liu, Liu who oh, also yeah. plays a Ken, who plays more of a foil to Ryan Gossie's Ken, um, does a good job at playing a rival like character. And it's, I guess... It, it, and there's an interesting concept that we have to also um, in, in, uh, iterate is that um, in embodying the concept of the Ken doll and Margot Robbie embodying the concept of the Barbie doll, uh, they don't forget that the heart of these uh, roles lies with the children and the, and the childhood aspects that came with them. Mm -hmm. uh, they understand that these are characters that are born into the real uh, into the real um, the realm of being. Child, uh, childhood playthings. Yes, and from the childhood play playthings, they are pretty much child, uh, like the uh, children from the real world, which are also uh, like, is expressed in this film through characters like America Ferrera's Gloria, mm -hmm. and which um, Bar Mar who is Margaret Barbie's human. Wow, she this is 
Like, if she wasn't uh, becoming an upcoming movie star in her right, like, because she's always been on major television networks and shows, mm -hmm. you'd be like, I could see her uh, upgrading her career after this. Yeah, very much. It's de deservingly so. Um, and <laughs> Wow, there's, like, so many scenes. Oh, we also got to give a shout-out to... Uh, uh, Will Ferrell? Uh, yes. Per Will wow. <laughs> now, because of the Warner Brothers, I think, well, like... Because Welfare played a similar role as, uh, in a live action form in the Lego movie, mm -hmm. he plays the C major, the fictional CEO of Mattel. <laughs> and and we, can we talk about how? Because this is a Mattel's production as well. For you know, the the ambitiousness and the bold sense of um, confidence that Mattel had to villainize themselves. Yes, in order to express uh, allow Greta Gerwig story to unfold is should be commended yeah, yeah, I, I, should yeah. be looked at. <laughs> I, I will not i will be shocked if this doesn't make it oscars and at least find itself in multiple um, categories because there is so much to praise here it's not funny and among those many categories i'm pretty sure and hope that is nominated and look and brought attention to is the production here yes uh their uh, way of bringing the world of barbie to life is just a thing of, sh of pure genius. You literally feel as though you are a part of the uh, Barbie world. And the way that they act, this, from the set design, from the costuming, from the way that they are uh, showing it, uh, showcasing on, on camera and on, on, on film, is it's, outstanding. Like, it feels like, like they recreate a plastic, campy world that doesn't look stupid at all. And yes! It, it is done charmingly because... These are all done with very, actually old school filmmaking techniques um, mm -hmm. that like some for that comes to mind like Wes Anderson uh -oh. and his modern films. Uh, also from old school techniques, you have uh, this movie even have uh, have time to have a big musical number that is a prize permission alone. That was so cool. <laughs> um, that harkens back to old school Hollywood. So this is very much uh, a film that anybody. Who has multiple types of interests can also enjoy it in their right. It's life. literally something for everybody, and what? Um, even on the soundtrack. Yes. Uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, I'm pretty sure that the soundtrack had to have been written alongside the script. Had to be because of how wor how it worked in tandem with some of the jokes, but also some of the st opponent storytelling. So the soundtrack itself is good enough as well as in its own right. If there's any type of like crit like some type of things that kind of holds the film back in some regards, is the fact that how they decided to depict the story of the sexes, it is kind of like can be kind of like too binary in a sense. Yeah, because um, look, let's put it this way: this film because it it focuses on the concept of the Barbie and the Ken doll and the world and how that translates towards the. Uh, our real world and the um, gender dynamics that goes into that, they only really focus it on the specifics of the two uh, of two genders, and that specifically just when it deals with um, males and females. But they do not necessarily in a more uh, traditional sense. Yeah, in a more <laughs> traditional sense, they do not uh, explore the concept, at least far as far as we're concerned, and what we feel as though they could have pushed it further on the whole concept of gender in and of itself and but, how that really f works out. And I can understand how that could possibly. Um, it, it can possibly lose focus if you get like too, like too sad, like goes into too deep into that. Possibly in another, another sequel. I would love for them to tackle sequel. that in the next, but, in another sequel. But you know, it is like still decided to do it in like a very straightforward way. Mm. It is, in despite the fact that it's more of a Barbie movie. Um, it is disappointing how the Kens are still a little bit not as not as explored as they could have been even in this first initial film. Exactly. Because one question that nobody's going like this not uh, it's not a spoiler or anything. No. That we have after watching this movie is where does the Kens live? Yeah, I need that to be answered real quickly. So where we find this film? Uh, where do we? How we feel as though we worked out yet? Yeah. Well, in this particular case, uh, just like Oppenheimer, we found this to be an amazing um, movie. This is just, wow. Mm -hmm. T two double hit, hard hitting films <sighs> that does their subject matter some good work. This is definitely um, something for the studios to 
research and to try and figure out how to continue going on before with more like this. Just um, make good movies. Exactly. It's quality work. If you love something or at least you have interest in making it, you know, appear to be better um, in your eyes, it's going to work out. And so we have another review for Barbie. And this finish off Barbie Heimer. Uh, as always, please like, share, and subscribe and hit the bell down there at the bottom for notifications. We want to hear from you. Uh, did you watch Barbie? And also, look at our social media outlets of Instagram, Facebook, and at the time of this video, um, Twitter became X. I don't know. There's so many jokes, so much <laughs> things to really take away from that. I don't know what to go. I can't. I, it's just low hanging I don't think it's going to stick. No. Um, my name is Adam, and, and I'm in a Sticky Media Productions. See you guys later.